When listening to an argument, how long does it take you to start forming an opinion? Skeptical listeners are all too few, and Charles Darwin knew that because of this human tendency, the way he introduced his radical evolutionary ideas in his classic work on the origin of species really mattered. With this in mind, it's notable that the first plant or animal named in his book's introduction was a woodpecker. Of all the examples he had available to him, why a woodpecker? Most of us would expect that he would start with his Galapagos finches, or the diversity of fossil shells in the Paleozoic, or the tremendous range of variety in plants and animals achieved through domestication. But instead, he initiates his argument of his life with a woodpecker. When you read what Darwin had to say about woodpeckers, it is clear that he was struck by them because they so clearly define the linkage between species attributes and behavior. Some facts. The pileated woodpecker is among the largest species of woodpeckers, and lucky for us, is rather common in forests of North America. In fact, I saw one just last week searching for insects in a dying oak outside my place of work in North Carolina. Incredibly, the pileated woodpecker can pound its head against the trees at speeds of up to 20 times per second. That's 12,000 times per day, and at speeds that create a force of up to 1,200 G, or about 25 kilometers per hour. Try doing that yourself. Not only does this woodpecker not complain about headaches, but they thrive with this behavior. It is fundamental to their survival. If you had a woodpecker in your hand, with no idea about its habits or habitat, you'd be struck by many differences with other birds. Of course, we do have a very good idea of the habitats of the nearly 200 species of woodpeckers in the world. And we know that these distinctive attributes make sense, given their behavior. The dense bill with a chisel-like tip has clear value for excavating wood. Go on a hike in the woods and you can see them chiseling holes in search of larvae or ants. This skill is also important for excavating nest cavities. Nests hidden inside the trees provide a clear advantage over nests on branches, and many other species you'd use woodpecker cavities for that same purpose. So many, in fact, that some argue that large woodpeckers are a keystone species for the entire forest ecosystem. The relatively thick skull is important to take the force of the blows. Unusually strong mandible and neck muscles help tighten them to absorb the shock. Strong leg bones provide stability during pounding. Spine that curves downward greatly improves tail support. Unusually stiff and short tail feathers are part of this. It improves the tail support. Zygodactyl feet provide a more stable grip for clinging to potentially loose bark on the sides of trees. The long tongue permits deeper exploration of cavities. The well-developed tongue muscles are needed for pushing the tongue in and out and stiffening it for control. The horny barbed tongue tip is useful, is necessary even, to snag insect larvae. A flexible elongated bone that supports the muscular tongue called a hyoid that in some woodpecker species extends from the top of the bill over and behind the skull, separating, passing on either side of the neck into the throat cavity, rejoining to support up to four inches of tongue extension beyond the bill. The hyoid allows greater tongue protrusion than would otherwise be possible. The tendons and muscles that secure it provide a sling-like power. There are other interesting characteristics of the woodpecker that I did not mention. One of these is their amazing coloration. Like many birds, woodpeckers are stunning creatures. How anyone can look at these beauties and not pick up their binoculars and go out bird watching is simply beyond me. These are adaptations as well, but it is thought that they largely result from sexual selection. In other words, regardless of their environment, it is female preference in prettier mates that has triggered the diversification of pattern and color. Genetic differences still drive change, but variation takes hold because wildlife discriminates, not because of habitat provision. Careful and well-disciplined observations, along with robust theory build up over decades, gives us confidence that the observations we make have the meaning we ascribe to them. But as with many aspects of evolutionary biology, vocal doubters refuse to accept what experts know with all manner of surety to be true. 
These doubters of science argue that these amazing traits of woodpeckers result not from natural changes over time, but from a simple assignment by a supernatural being who, for whatever reason known only to them, was unable to work the machinery of evolution. Given the wonder that every thoughtful person has upon seeing a woodpecker at work, and more so when they have one in the hand, it should come as no surprise that woodpeckers have flown over center stage of the creationist science debate. For creationists, woodpeckers provide an example of extraordinary divine creativity. On the other hand, to those of us who look for fabulous non-supernatural explanations through science, woodpeckers provide a particularly stunning example of how everyday natural variation can lead to specialization and speciation, the sort of example we would think to introduce an important book with. Creationist arguments against the possibility of woodpecker evolution mirror their arguments made for other complex phenomena, like the eye. They argue that incremental changes are imperfect and provide no survival advantage until complete. Transitional forms are functionally impossible. With regard to woodpeckers, this argument has been made in two forms. First, they argue that the suite of woodpecker adaptations by themselves would not be advantageous alone, yet would have evolved separately. Therefore, evolution is an ina inadequate explanation for how they came to be. For example, a long tongue would be of little use without a chisel bill to create a hole in which to stick it. This rebuttal is easy. Existing species of woodpeckers and related species show wide-ranging combinations and variation in each of these interesting adaptations, and yet they thrive. Creationists continually struggle with a concept that in nature there is no end goalpost, that an evolved species must reach before it becomes viable. It's the mind baggage from their designed with a plan worldview. A second and similar argument concerns the woodpecker's unusual tongue and hyoid. Creationists argued that the woodpecker's tongue is anchored in some species in one of the bird's two nostrils. They argued that this could not have developed because transitional positions would mean that the tongue was pointing in the wrong direction to function. In rebuttal, their concept of hyoid anchoring results from their poor understanding of woodpecker anatomy, hyoid growth during the bird's lifetime, and how adaptive change actually happens. As a young woodpecker matures, the hyoid grows away from the tongue, providing for longer and longer tongue extensions. It is attached to the jaw and the base of the skull with ligaments and muscles. The hyoid is not anchored where it ends, as misrepresented by creationists. This structure is what allows the tongue to extend and move freely. Supernatural explanations, no matter how uplifting, shortchange the curious among us. Biological questions such as those that relate to woodpeckers are not only solvable through the scientific method, but most have already been solved. The hyoid, as amazing as it is, is explainable by evolution through natural selection. One final note. Humans also have a hyoid bone. Blame it on the simple fact that we share kinship with these remarkable creatures. It's located right here above your larynx. Can you feel it? It sometimes is called the lingual bone because its position in our body helps us make complex vocalizations, much like it did our cousins, the Neanderthal, who shared a quite similar hyoid. And for this, we believe we're also able to speak. In woodpeckers, this bone structure became adapted toward a different use than language. It morphed to support the incredible long tongue extension needed to acquire food from difficult places.